Hello everyone and welcome back to ECS 2210. This week we will start our discussions on chapter 7 of the textbook which is about MOS amplifiers. Uh, similar to what we did with chapter 5 of the textbook which we had the BJT amplifiers, um, our discussions are going to be on three different types of stages of amplification that we could have. So back in chapter 5 with BJTs we had common emitter, common base and common collector. Here we're going to have common source, common drain, and common gate amplifiers. So uh, in these basically slides uh, that we start this week, um, I'm going to start with a little bit of a brief review of chapter 6 um, and what we learned about MOS transistors and uh, their, phys their physics of operation and also in terms of the DC operation. We're going to have a little bit of a brief review of that. And then after that, I'm going to have a brief review of biasing, similar to what we did with BJTs. So we're going to learn about different types of biasing that we could have uh, for MOS amplifiers. And then after that, I'm going to move on to, well, actual amplification stages. We're going to calculate the um, gain, the voltage gain, more import most importantly, the voltage gain of different kind of stages that we could have. We're going to start with common source and then common source with degeneration, very similar to what we had with common emitter and common emitter with degeneration. And then after that, we're going to move on to common gate and then common drain. Uh, in our analysis or in our discussions, we're going to talk about both circuit analysis, which involves basically us being given a circuit and then being asked to calculate the gain and input and output resistance or impedance of the circuit. And also we're going to talk about uh, design questions where the spec is given to us, meaning that like basically the question is telling us what kind of an input impedance, what kind of an output impedance and what kind of a gain uh, are we expected to have from this amplifier and we are asked to actually design the amplifier ourselves. And by designing, I mean finding out what values of resistors do we need actually to be connected to the, tra to, to the transistor, how many stages do we need, like basically what should be the W and L of each transistor that we use in the circuit and so on and so forth. We're going to see both uh, amplifiers made of NMOS devices and PMOS devices, so N-type and P-type kind of MOS transistors. And also we're going to see in the end uh, a couple of examples on multi-stage amplifiers. So like basically we connect um, a couple of these stages together to see like basically how do they actually work together so that like we can have two stages of amplification cascaded to each other or like three stages and so forth. Okay. Okay. Um, one reminder from chapter six was really our discussions about DC operation of transistors and the um, basically their small signal model. We started talking in chapter six, we started learning about this new device called MOSFETs or NMOS transistors in this case. And uh, well, PMOS transistors, they're shown like this. We said this is gate, this is drain, this is source. Um, if VGS is actually the, the voltage difference between gate and source is smaller than something called tertial voltage that we discussed about it and we introduced it when we were talking about the physics of transistors, we said that the transistor will be off. If VGS is greater than VTH, then my transistor is on. Then I have to discuss, I have to decide if this is in saturation or triode. So if V drain source was greater than VGS minus V threshold, which we called it the overdrive voltage, then we call this transistor to be in um, saturation. And if VDS was smaller than VGS minus V threshold, the overdrive voltage, we said this is in triode. And then if this, like we had some special case that if VDS was actually a lot smaller than VGS minus VTH, we said that this is in deep triode. And we're not going to talk about that in this chapter. Okay. And the other thing we said that is that uh, we want our transistor be, to be in saturation if we want to use it as an amplifier. Um, we looked at the current relationship, the ID, uh, the expression for ID for all of these different kind of situations. For off, it's just basically ID is equal to zero. And then we saw the expression for it, saturation, triad, and deep triad. So this is the case if the ID is in saturation, right? So this is the DC, um, basically analysis of the transistor or DC operation of transistor that we can see that this ID is equal to really, if I want to write it in a simpler format, it's basically K divided by two times VGS minus VTH squared. I'm writing in this format so that you know that I'm, I'm trying to emphasize the importance of the fact that this ID 
is actually when I'm in saturation, it actually has a quadratic relationship with gate source, uh, the difference between gate source and tertial voltage, and uh, then a linear relationship with the rest of device parameters, and the fact that it's not really dependent on any uh, on the drain source voltage. That's what makes it a really nice voltage controlled current source. Then we moved on to the AC volt, the small signal model. We said why we call it this a small signal model. The reason was that we want this the signal to be small enough that it doesn't actually change our biasing point. And we talked a lot about the importance of biasing. We said that if I plot the DC current of a transistor ID versus its VGS, I'm going to see something like this, right? So up to a certain point that I'm going to call V threshold, the transistor is off, so I don't have any current. And beyond that point, I'm going to have, the more current that I have, the steeper the slope is going to get, right? And the slope is going to be really GM. It's kind of the quality, it is kind of correlated to the quality of my transistor in terms of amplifying the signal, in terms of being an amplifier. So the biasing point was important. And because I wanted to actually approximate any little piece of this curve as a line, Therefore, I couldn't have this VGS to be changing more than a little bit so that uh, I can still approximate it as a line, right? That's why I wanted my, my, my signal, my gate, the variations at the gate to be small, right? Okay, so small signal model, how did we calculate it? Well, we did a lot of analysis. We got to this expression for GM and we got to this expression for R0. We said that this lambda is really the channel length modulation. It has a relationship with 1 over L, meaning that uh, the larger the L, the weaker the channel length modulation, the smaller is the lambda, right? Now, uh, using this, basically, and the, the last thing that we discussed was that um, in the analysis of circuits, in the analysis of MOSFET-based circuits, first we start with DC analysis. And the DC analysis will tell us if the transistor is on or off. They will tell us if the transistor is in saturation or triode. And if we are in, in saturation, and if you're on and we are in saturation, then we know that I can use my amplifier as, a, as an, uh, my, my MOSFET as an amplifier. Therefore, I can find my GM and R0. Once I have this, I can actually start drawing my small signal circuit and move on to the AC analysis world. The other thing that I wanted to remind you guys is basically about this circuit. We talked about this circuit when we were talking about the BGT amplifiers and the beginning of the BGT amplifiers. And we said that for an amplifier, for if you want an amplifier, having a voltage controlled current source is actually quite useful. So in this case, you can see that um, if I have this V1 and I have a voltage controlled current source I1 is equal to KV1, then I can say that V out is equal to RL times the current of RL, let's call it IL, right? And then this IL is basically negative KV1 times negative KV1, simply because this negative K, uh, this current in the current source cannot go anywhere else other than the RL. This makes V out equal to negative K RL times V1, and knowing that V1 is equal to Vn, based on the definition, we know that this is equal to negative K RL Vn. And because of that, I can say the gain is equal to this expression.